Hi everyone, my name is Tris and this is Dublin Neil and you might be wondering what I have in front of me. Probably the title of the video gives it away but basically it's a collection of models that every time I go on Dark Castings website I'll order. As well as that I have some of the Pete Goss figures that I've picked up. I picked these up at the Wardy Model Railway Show. Um, here's some fantastic painted models that he's done himself in a fantastic layout. I believe that's the one that I saw. Um, other ones you can get um, are of course Model U, everyone knows a Model U, very very detailed models because they're scans of real life people. Um, but I've collected a lot of these Montes models uh, ones. Very nice, um, they are a white metal uh, casting um, and they're good basically. Uh, they've been cast and, and crafted by hand um, and I kind of like to support that at the same time as well as there's a bit of a price difference on the two so one where you get massive detail and really you can't really beat that detail um, you kind of save a little bit of money and you get models that still look incredible and once you when they sit in the loco or painted on your layout you know you're not going to spot it so I really like them so Monty's models really really lovely models um, I've got a lot of them here. I've also got some from P&D Marsh. P&D Marsh do the same type things and they paint them and provide them painted as well if you want that. So that's really great. So then I have some kind of like these older ones, some budget branch line, like linker system, and you know, you pick up various things that you can do. Uh, one of the ones that I'm really happy to have got, and this is a 3D printed one, I guess, of someone wearing the suit, whatever. It's very similar to Mr. Um, Topham Hats. Um, it's by Buggles Kelly Station. It's Tom that does that. So check out BugglesKellyStation.com to find the Monty's Models ones. I'll put some links in the description below. Um, but you can go on Dark Castings to find these. And I'm sure other places as well. But I, I think this is all Dark Castings. P&D Marsh, they've got their own website. P&D Marsh Models.com. That's their website. So that's that. What I do is I'm gonna actually just grab a camera and you can see a bit closer the kind of models that I have and that you could get to. So getting closer, you can see the array of models that we have here. So we'll grab some of the Pete Goss ones and you can see some of the details through here. Uh, people have spent some time handcrafting these and that's the way that's been for such a long time for the model industry. Some of the Monty's models ones, Station Master here. Obviously we can see what he's up to. He's got his watch in his hand keeping time of things so that's nice um then we've got land girl i don't know if that's a superhero name um or it's a lady of the land um so that's one that i might paint up yet and then you just go through here a bit more one involved here so you've got worker pushing wheelbarrow so we can paint them up and you can make use of them um you know even up to a signalman with a token so you can do the exchange if you want to uh, between the loco and the signalman. The ones that I want to paint up today, I really like the idea of printing up Tom's one, the Buggles Kelly station model. And what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna paint them up, mention a few things. It's not like kind of like a how-to. If you don't fancy painting models, um, I would go to um, Dan Everson's website. And Dan Everson has a company called Tunnel Lane Model Railways. This is Dan's Instagram page. You can find him on Facebook as well. Obviously that's where his Facebook is. But Dan does commission work painting models up for people. He does um, some really beautiful work. And actually what I'll be using today for my, let's call it inspiration on color themes and patterns and things like that. Cause he's got a really good eye for it. It's just like, I use his, his Instagram page as a reference. Um, so, uh, you know, go through that. He's fantastic at painting. He's painted a model for me already. Um, but what I would like to do is just kind of show what Dan can do. He's, he does everything, layouts, painting, people, um, does just everything, uh, really. And uh, I'm really impressed with what he does. And I'm proud to say that I, I know him personally. And, uh, you know, he's, he's taught me a few things. Like, look at this, painted. Yeah, nice shirt patterns on there and that's fantastic work that he's done. He, when you go to Model Railway shows you might see all this out. Go say hi to him. Um, he's a great guy, really really great guy and if you want models to be painted 
um, or any commission work or anything like that. This isn't a promotional video for Dan. This is purely um, me just wanting to show you um, what I've, yeah, what I've experienced of him. Anyway, I'll stop gushing over him here um, and we'll get on with some kind of painting and preparation. I picked a few that I think I can paint up today. Uh, the PND Marsh ones are Loco Crew, and I've already painted up a few of them recently. So I've got the carrying pot and crate, P Porter, P Porter, <laughs> the Porter. Then you've got some like general guys that are working by the look of it, some workers. Uh, not really sure what colours want to paint everything. This one's very obvious, the one that looks like Mr. Topham Hat by Tom at Buggles Kelly, level keeper crossing guy. He's got his hand up in there, that's kind of cool. He could be like up on a fence or something like that, you know, leaning on it. Guy with a paint pot and, and brush, that's cool. And then the girl, the nine girl, standing. So what I'm gonna do is grab a piece of wood. I'm just gonna slice this into some pieces so then I can have them poked in here and then I can paint like three at a time and find the other one. And it will give me something to hold on to opposed to the model itself, which will also be good because um, I most doubt, well, most likely will be clumsy and touch them. So yeah, slice this up, prime them up and we'll come back. So you see the models are on this piece of wood. I've glued them on so they're not going to fall off. Okay, so I've got the others on the others so it's easy to handle and we can work on them bit by bit. So the fun bit. How do we go about doing this? Well, we've got some options really. Your options are to you know, come in and you can paint all your details. You could have primed with these white and gone in with really thin paint and then the details will pop out. What I like to do makes it a bit more fun for me. I do something called dry brushing. And use one of these, it's like a makeup brush really. Uh, nothing too exciting. I get a little bit of paint on the end of the brush. Um, you don't have to, like the whole idea of dry brushing is to kind of do it so the paint's almost dry but what you do is just get a little bit of paint on the brush it doesn't have to be um completely dry we can still introduce moisture to the brush um but you know there's not too much here and basically you can check on your finger um and if you know, you're doing is getting the tops of things that means you're fine what i'm going to do is with downward strokes and that might change as we get going we're just going to knock this around so then we pick out all those high points. Get the other camera on it, so we should be good. And I just come in. And it means when we do our other colours, we'll have some natural highlights and we don't have to spend too much time doing it. I'm a bit time poor at the moment, so I don't get as much time as I want. Let's get his face a bit. And you can already see, you know, there's a lot of detail popping up there. And get a little bit of paint on the brush. I'm using a wet palette when I'm when I'm doing this. The beauty of the wet palette is your paint doesn't dry up so quickly. So you get probably towards like an hour. You still get a small amount of skin that kind of goes up over the top of it, but you get to keep using that paint, and especially if you've mixed up a colour that you like. So yeah, what we do is we do all of them. And I'll come back to you and we can have a little look at what the next step will be. Now these have worked out quite ghostly um, <laughs> when you run the, the dry brush over them. Um, I don't know, it kind of picks up all those little details, highlights, you know what you need to be painting. What colours shall I use? I don't know, we'll go with something, we can always change it. But I only have a few hours to enjoy myself um, doing some painting before my next kind of journey. Uh, it's the evening. So uh, I'll just crack on, start putting some colours on. I'm going to dilute a paint. So I use acrylic paints. Like I used this to do the dry brushing. It's by Vallejo, um, or Vallejo, um, as they like to say in Europe. And I'll just be using generally um, my range of paints that I have up here. Um, so I've got my, my general colour paints that are up here, which is which is all good. Um, and then I have uh, my airbrush ones there and then all the Citadel paints that I use for when I do my Warhammer things. 
So what I'll do is I'll start doing some painting and I'll share bits of it as I go really. It's not a how to, but it's more of what I'm up to. So yeah, let's see how these little monkeys get on. Groot likes to observe as I'm doing it. Groot, are you, and he's just gonna give himself a wash. Um, but he likes to try and sit on the corner of the table, sit on something important normally. Um, got some of my little Warhammer models there. Um, I had to move them out of the way because he decided he's going to stand on them, didn't you? Yeah? No. I think he wants his dinner anyway. It's about that time. So when I do my painting, these are like my normal glasses. So I can just have better sight as you like to. Obviously, you don't need to see my face as close. But the point is, I use three and a half magnification. As you can see, my eyes get slightly bigger. <laughs> So um, yeah, anyway, they allow me to see everything, but until I'm about this close, so that's about this far away, everything's then in focus. But when I'm doing things, I end up doing what well, I understand. <laughs> you normally see your granddad doing it, um, looking over the tops of the glasses to see what they're doing. And then you're doing this bit like this. It's, uh, it's quite funny. Um, so my mum, I understand, has some times 10 ones of these. Um, which must be, I don't know, you can see the moon when you have them on. Anyway, I'll be using these um, when I do it. So I'm looking at my screen when I talk to you. Anyway, let's get on with some painting. So for this guy in the middle, I'm going to use got my wet palette here. Just don't be afraid to thin your paints down because it means that you get to keep some of the detail that's on there. And then your part kind of isn't as shiny as well. I'm using acrylics, as you can see. So I'm going to paint on the camera here, well not on the camera, but paint the model whilst I'm doing it. I'm just going to show you an example of when we paint on a thin coat, because we can come in with two. I'm just going to work this little area here, trying to avoid the hand as we're doing it. It's well far away. You can touch into the dark areas. And the beauty is they will stay a darker shade. And this is a very common painting process. It's been done for years um, by many modelers. But when that dries, we'll have um, dark contours and um, obviously highlighted areas. So I'll just make that a bit closer for you. You can see the high low points there. And it means that that's all we need to do really on this. We don't have to come back in and add any, any highlights or anything. We can just work our way around the model and paint what we want. He's going to have different colour trousers to a shirt. So remember that when you're doing things, you don't normally have all the same colour clothes that you wear. So he might be trying to match. So what might then do is add in using some like brown so we can mix some of this colour with some brown. Um, bring a bit more of that in. And we just, you know, it's maybe a little bit too dark there. Um, get some of the paint off the brush. And we just have this darker colour here. So we can come in here and uh, I'll just times it by three so you can see a bit better. And all we do is we're just gonna come in here with our brush. And if we're not happy, if we feel like, oh, that's not really the color I wanted, like why would you have brown trousers for? We might like brown trousers, you know, consider that. Um, but ultimately when people look at your railway as well, they're not gonna spot the guy that has the wrong color trousers. They're going to be looking at your locos going round, whatever. So really get some colour on all your different people. Go from there. If you feel that the paint hasn't gone on thick enough and you can still see too much of the um, of the colours, just kind of put it about two foot away. Have a look at it and think, well, oh, that's fine. I'm happy with that. We'll get some colour on his shirt in the middle, um, his face, his hat. I do the other side of here, paint his stick, do his shoes, and he's done. We move over to the next model. I'm part way through with this. So I haven't done the skin tones, but I've done like the main colors of things. So you've got um, Mr. The guy that looks like the top of hat. Um, then you've got some of the guys here, putting moustache in here. We've got the hats um, there and everything. So yeah, it's coming together nicely. Uh, just like as it said, done thin coats. Didn't do his hats, he needs to do his hats. Um, these, oh, knocking things over. Um, yeah, so you're working my way through. And like I said, from a distance, that'd be good. You can run some matte varnish over after as well, get rid of any shiny spots that might be showing for them. I uh, just need to do some straps and things 
uh, on this guy again skin tones and then they'll be done so i'm just doing these ones at the moment just on this guy's coat and uh, then a bit of his hats there so i'll just do some darker color trousers on there and work my way through um, and once they're done yeah we'll have a little look at it but it's been quite enjoyable um i would argue um that you know you, you can spend too much time overthinking what colors will be but to start mixing up a color that you like so uh, for example i've got my color palette here and i'll just like grab a gray and if i'm feeling like a gray so we'll grab a bit of gray it's watered down quite nicely but there's a certain amount of pigment in there so i'm like fine um and then i just come in here just run a bit closer just so i can see with my camera just don't have too much on the brush when you're doing it you don't want it to all pull off and he's obviously got sleeves and we're just going to come in here and you might think oh well you can still see all that white um obviously a bit blurry there um so you can always come back in after just do a little bit more of that gray and it will stand out a bit more um when it dries so try not to put too much in one go otherwise it would take ages to dry the beauty of acrylics is it doesn't take long and if you need to you can darken the shade up a little bit um adding that bit of shade here you just work your way around really and just enjoy just basically colouring in all the different areas. That's all we're doing when we're doing these models. You don't have to be too artistic with it, you don't have to have too many highlights. You know, okay, well, I want to do some brown trousers, so we've got our brown here. Um, don't want it to be too thick, so we can see um, a certain uh, clearness to it, or the opaqueness isn't so strong. Um, and then we just pop it in here and so you think oh that, that brown's not very nice okay so right let's grab a, kind of some other colors to mix with it so we can bring that color up add a tiny bit of water with it so it keeps going and we'll just come back in lighten that shade slightly if we want to because it's wet as well we are in the advantage of we can just tweak it and adjust it and go from there obviously don't forget the rear side of the model it's very easy to forget that's what we're doing um so we just come up here and we just coat this and we come back and we do a second coat um like i said it's going to go on that layout you know you're not really going to spend too much time staring at it um so you can just get some colors on them get them on the layout and then you'll be happy. Well, I like to think you will be. Where you have like this jacket on the back, I wasn't really happy on the front because it wasn't that dark. So I'm gonna go and probably neat with this color here. We have a darker one here, but as I showed you before, those white highlights do pop through really nicely. It's got a bit of a short jacket he's got on here. It's like a rolled up sleeve jackety thing. That's fine. Just come in here with his hat. So we had a bit of brown when we did it. But let's get the other sleeve done. Come around to the front of him. Let me know in the in the comments if you know you like this kind of uh, video. I enjoy making them because I enjoy painting little models. Like I said, I've got a certain affinity towards uh, painting my little Warhammer models and everything. Um, I'm not really <laughs> sure how much um, doing videos of painting. It's all model people on here for my model railway challenge. Model, model railway challenge, model railway uh, videos um, is really going to be good for the channel. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix some brown with the black in here. And we'll just give them a, a brownish hat. Just make sure, you know, that if you're if you're not so good at painting, like knock your fingers together a bit more um, and give yourself some stability. Don't be afraid to hold the brush actually on the ferrule. Like, it might people might think it's bad practice but the amount of accuracy you get when you hold the brush by the ferrule is is fantastic um well, that's what i find anyway i only say that because i've been watching other modelers paint and i see them do that and i think oh okay i'll try that out and i think oh great so yeah but what i find with when you paint is thoroughly therapeutic and uh I don't think it's something that you're ever going to regret, um, you know, spending your time doing. Of course, if you miss your bust, 
on your destination or you leave to go to work late or you miss a birthday party because you spent the day painting maybe you might regret it but there might be an argument that you don't end up regretting it i'm offering now i'm gonna use a kind of a medium shade brown for the the broom here so we on there we don't have to use too much paint we're just going to walk it up uh, you can see his trousers not quite painted there we can come back what it is i'll cover the bristles anyway and um, they will need to be darker but it's a straw brush so it's an argument it's all similar kind of color and again when this is on the layout you're not going to notice that so run that up there just be careful you don't get it when you model when you do that and if you do get some on it's acrylic so you just water you know wet the brush with you know clean the brush wet it um and then you can simply like wash off what you've done because you're putting on quite watery paint as well so it's quite hard actually doing this on video half of this is probably out of focus which i apologize for or maybe you've just come to listen to me as i play my paintbrush to the paint um to the yeah the wooden brush If there's anything you'd like to know um, about any of this, let me know in the comments. Just fire away. Comments are key <laughs> for me to know um, the feedback on what you all think of what I'm up to. Um, so, just trying to get certain things on focus. I'm using my mobile phone a bit more. This makes doing the video is a bit easier and it's a bit dark that and if it's a bit dark i'm just going to clean the brush and i'm just going to use a slightly damp brush to come in and just thin it out there we are quite nicely run that over there i think that would be fine so that's him done so i really i've got these two to do now get them done then skin tones couple little odds and sods and we'll be happy so these are my little people finished it's been really nice put them on the bits of wood to, to work on them because you've got both sides you can do uh, and actually as a group they don't look bad i'm really pleased with actually the the time i put into them to having that many painted up that could go on any layout that i want to work on i've got many more i want to do so i want to try and get through as many as i can um, I think it's important that I varnish these just to protect them. As they're metal, what you'll find is the corners, you can knock them and then they'll get a bit silver edges and things come up. Um, but no, really pleased. I'll just slot them in here and deck them up this way so you can see from behind. Um, yeah, same kind of thing is going on. I kind of got into the mode of using the same colours all the time. So I tried to introduce some reds. I think if I was doing it again, maybe add some, some green in somewhere. Um, obviously, you think about what colours did they use back then. But ultimately, no one's going to look too closely. But we've got a bit of variation going on there. We've got the guy with the brush. quite like him. The guy with the paintbrush was cool. Um, just slide him into the front. Uh, I was really happy with... Because he has his cool moustache. <laughs> you know, like broom-handled moustache. And his little paintbrush on the side is down here. So it's getting blurry when I try and show you a guy with a box. If I want to put more time into these, I could put a couple of little washes on things and highlight other areas. But from a distance, they look great. Like I said, it's not really a how to paint little model people, but hopefully it helps you if you're wondering, I fancy doing some painting and you want to pick up some models to paint either um, ones by, you know, from Dark Castings, uh, Buggles Kelly. Uh, you've got um, P&D Marsh um, and then Model U as well. And then there's probably other companies that do it as well. I just don't know um, the other ones. Um, go check out all of those sites. Go and support these fantastic creators that create these fun models for us to paint to then go on a layout at a later date. I've enjoyed doing this. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you hit that subscribe button. If you're not already a subscriber, um, like the video if you like it. It always helps the videos grow. Um, and then if you really, really want to and you want to support this channel further and you like what I do, you can always join the channel. And um, you can click and become a channel member or you can go over to Patreon and join that way. Either way, you'll be supporting me do more and more videos like this. And 
I will appreciate it very much. Thank you so much to my current channel members and my patrons. Your support is always really, really appreciated. You take care. I will see you soon. And goodbye. What are you doing down there? Let's just sit down by my feet. Don't you? This is Groot. Sleeping and purring. Little monkey, aren't he? I didn't know he was here, and then I went to put my feet in him, and I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, see you all soon.